Hey everyone, Mickey here from your mini Wikipedia on a Monday. And this week it is not a solo cast actually. I do have my resident uh, strength expert, Darren Ellis, who runs the exercise component of Monday's Matter uh, with me this morning to chat about strength training in a calorie deficit because this is a question that often comes up for people and they're just really unsure as to the importance of it or even if it's a good thing to be training at um, this type of training at this time. Darren, thanks for taking the time this morning. Always my pleasure, Mickey. Excellent. So can we even just really, I suppose, broadly, uh, big picture, we know that strength training is important. What makes it even more important if someone is following a fat loss program in a calorie deficit? What are some of the main reasons that you might uh, prescribe or or add a program like that? Well, there's two or three sort of major ones, Mickey. The, the first one, well, no particular order, I guess they're probably fairly closely related, but when we are eating in, in any kind of deficit, often what happens is, sure, we are generally trying to reduce fat, but being in a calorie deficit, chances are we will end up reducing muscle as well. The muscle is quite an expensive sort of tissue to to hold, and um, the body is always out for survival first. And so when that um, sort of perceived starvation can occur, um, it's often not too choosy about the tissue that it that it starts to kind of recycle in. So sure, you'll lose some fat, but you you might lose some muscle as well. You might lose some bone. Um, so not ideal. Um, and I, I've seen examples many times where people are losing weight and they're seeing the scales tracking down, um, fats going down, but muscles going down as well. So body composition from a sort of percentage basis ends up the same, and that's not an ideal scenario um metabolism is reducing as a result and it's more likely that we will see that yo-yo scenario where once that calorie deficit ends um fat will come back as calories go back up but quite often muscle doesn't and you repeat that cycle a few times over a few decades and um not ideal i was just gonna uh clarify so someone might be a smaller version of themselves but they will have less muscle potentially less lean tissue overall including potentially bone yeah yeah potentially and so then the next time they have to diet they're going to have to go for a, a greater calorie restriction um and um yeah this, it's not a it's a race to the bottom right it's not a um it's not something we can win yeah awesome so what's the second reason darren um, so the second reason is sort of related to that is by strength training, we can uh, stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a really interesting one, and I've seen a couple of studies um, that have shown this. I talked about muscle being quite an expensive tissue and that the body tends to um, almost resist attempts to build it, um, particularly in a calorie deficit. But the act of strength training is a powerful stimulus. and when that calorie deficit is still protein centric or protein forward, some people say, like your um, prescriptions are, Mickey, the combined stimulus of strength training and the protein bolus that's in the meal seems to still promote muscle building um, while being in that calorie deficit. So, put another way, you're burning fat and you're at least maintaining muscle which is still great, but you might be building it as well, which is sometimes considered unheard of that you could build muscle while you are in a calorie deficit. But um, it has been shown in some studies. Um, and I say the win would be maintaining for sure. Yeah. If you're in sort of this fat loss phase, um, maintaining muscle is actually still fantastic in that scenario. So that's where that strength training is. is um, uh, it's, 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 it's a non-negotiable. Yeah. You really have to include it if, if you're trying to – lose fat and make it sustainable, keep it off and not have, and not be forced into that yo-yo scenario. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you say that, Darren. I was just looking at research actually around if you can build muscle if you're in a calorie deficit. That essentially sort of can you lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. And mm. and certainly for people who are who appears to be either new to new to building, so new to uh, sort of strength-based training, yes. they are much more um, on a spectrum. They're much more likely to um, have that opportunity to build muscle and burn fat. Uh, 
and also people who are who do carry a lot of excess body fat. So, you know, the thing is, is with when you, yeah, essentially when you build muscle, you need to try and um, you know, need the energy available to help support that process. And as you said, it's an energetic process. So if you're liberating fat from the fat cells and fat tissue, that can then go towards that building muscle, which of course, a leaner individual who might not have as much fat to lose might struggle a little bit in that. And so I love that you have that real emphasis on maintenance as as the goal, uh, because that there's not, it's, you know, you can absolutely build strength as I understand it, but actually hypertrophy and building muscle is a slightly different scenario. Yeah, and uh, and I think I'm sort of I'm sort of that guy who's uh, uh, lately been tro- been sort of uh, the guy who celebrates average <laughs> and um, just enough, but um, it's just about being realistic. And so, yeah, like uh, a lot of people would find it tough to wrap their heads around the idea of maintenance. Yeah, um, but um, it's a win in that scenario, and it's maybe another way to say it is you know one goal at a time. Um, as you said, it's possible to gain muscle and lose fat. It tends to reward um, someone who's newer to training or someone who has more fat to lose. Um, so if you're not in those camps, um, having a goal of, oh, I want to build muscle and lose fat is still quite common, but it's just less realistic. But if you can lose fat and, and hold on to muscle, um, you're still going to look like you've gained muscle, which is pretty cool. Yeah, totally. And then you can move into a muscle gaining phase if you wish. Yeah, and what's interesting about that is once you have got become a leaner um, individual, you can tolerate. I'm not sure if that's the correct word, but you can certainly tolerate, sustain a, a, a higher calorie surplus when you're trying to build that muscle without gaining as much fat. So a leaner a leaner person can um, potentially gain less fat while they're in a muscle building phase. Yeah, in a, in a calorie uh, surplus. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a win as well. Awesome, Darren. That's just an opinion. Um, I think I had a third reason. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes? Yes, no, you tell me your third reason. Oh, um, well, it's it's more um, along the sort of, um, you know, insulin sensitivity, glucose sensitivity side of things. So um, building muscle, muscle um, and strength training will make you a little bit more sensitive and so better able to partition any carbs, and I know a lot of your um, programs tend to be lowering carbs anyway, Yeah. but uh, you're going to do better with the carbs that you do eat. And by partitioning, I mean that, that those when they break down to sugars, they're more likely to go into your muscle yeah. to be used as fuel versus stored as fat. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's really nice. Um, and and I think this is, you know, one thing I often get surprised about, Darren, and I, I just, this is what I, I'm interested to hear your take or your opinion on it, is that... There are plans out there which uh, promote doing no activity, uh, particularly in those first phases of the plan, which might be super low calorie. Um, And I'm not sure if you you might not have seen them because you don't run as much into the nutrition space as you do training. But um, I'm often surprised by that, given what we know um, of the importance of strength training. So I understand why people get a little bit sort of um, confused or they're not quite sure of what the best approach is when they're sort of embarking on something which is quite low calorie. Yes, I think there might be two reasons for that. Um, and this is, just, this is just my hypothesis off the, off the bat. One is that often most people, uh, experts included, uh, will make the assumption that exercise increases hunger. Okay. Um, and it's, so it's sort of a, a blanket, uh, it's a blanket, uh, I'm mixing my metaphors here, blanket brush. I'm painting this, everything with the same brush. Um, and it tends to be more cardio or higher intensity cardio type exercise. Yeah. That increases appetite the most. Strength training, particularly um, low volume strength training, which is what we're doing in, um, in this program, not as much doesn't drive your appetite as much, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, you don't want to come home ravenous and, you know, um, poor impulse control every time you exercise. Uh, the second reason was most people would agree that the most powerful lever we can pull when it comes to calorie balance is through diet. Yeah. You know, there's only so much we can exercise so in terms of trying to, to tilt that balance into a deficit. Um, it's easier to do it through diet than it is through exercise. Um, and so I often think that that's certainly why um, some people will move towards that as the, as the first approach. Yeah. Um, and so that could be a thing as well. 
Yeah, okay, no, that makes perfect sense. And what about the, so obviously in Mondays Matter, depending on the uh, level of program you're on, the, people are going to cycle through one day, two days, um, or even possibly three days in a week, uh, not every week, uh, of protein sparing modified fast, where they eat just protein, which as you um, mentioned at the top of our discussion is an important uh, stimulator for muscle protein synthesis, but they eat just protein and nothing else. And it's lean protein, but it is a is very low calorie, 600 to 800 calories a day. So, you know, what is your general advice around work? Um, well, I will caveat that by saying if someone is working out regardless, that's a base plan and we will layer on calories on top of that. But what is the sort of thought around training, particularly strength training, on a very low calorie day like that. Do you, is it anything in particular that people have to think about? Sometimes I think it's a little bit individual. Uh, there might be some people who it doesn't matter what they do, that any kind of formal exercise is going to really drive that hunger. Yeah. Um, sometimes I think the best thing to do on a um, PSMF day is um, pick a busy work day. Not a physical work day, you know. If you're a builder, um, that would be that would be a tough one. But just if you've got a busy day, and it might even be a weekend day where you've just got a lot on with the kids or or something like that. But I find the the best thing is just to be moderately light, light to moderately active across the day, um, because having your mind off food is actually one of the more important things. Um, but if you were, yeah, if if, it, if you felt like exercising, I still lean towards strength training versus. Um, uh, more cardiovascular stuff for the hunger reasons that I was describing. But um, most people, if they're in a bit of a routine, they're not going to find that, um, oh, I didn't have enough energy to train or, yes. or, you know, or anything like that, no matter what they're doing. But in that same, in that same uh, sentence, that does mean that they should be training sensibly in, in accordance with the plan that they're on. Yeah. So, if you are trying to go and do uh, an F45 class or a CrossFit class or or run your PB 5K, um, don't do it on um, the PSMF day. In fact, don't do it on a uh, fat loss kind of program full stop. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because again, it's sort of that chasing two rabbits that you mentioned earlier. Like if your goal is fat loss, yeah, that should be yeah. your primary. That's what you should pay your attention to. Of course, if it's performance, then you wouldn't be following a plan like Mondays Matter anyway. Exactly. But it's funny how things, you know, gets in your head. You're you're fully committed. Yep, this is what I want. I, I want to burn some fat. And then you see an advert for the latest athletic training um, you know, boot camp or something, and you think, yes. oh, actually, what I really want, and, and um, you know, we, we get led down these rabbit holes. So, staying focused is is a superpower. Um, and if you don't have that superpower, just trying to remind yourself that this is only eight weeks or only twelve weeks or, or whatever it is. It's just a very small phase in your life. Um, and um, and yeah, work on work on reminding yourself that once that's finished, it's like when uh, I used to you know work in. Uh, commercial gyms uh, and uh, someone would always complain about the music and I'll say don't worry it'll finish in two minutes um, and something else will be on <laughs> uh, and um, yeah it's it, you know it's, it's it doesn't take long before the next song comes on so if if the if the current program you're on doesn't have everything you want yeah don't worry you can do something else in the next one okay um, it's a it's a valuable skill to work on and I'm not saying I've got it nailed I think it's human nature but um Social media leads us to believe we can have it all all at once. And um, just working on, as you said, um, one thing at a time is the key. Absolutely. Um, so, Darren, can you just talk us through the strength training program that you've made up for Mondays Matter, just to give people an idea of, uh, regardless of what sort of uh, fat loss plan that they might be on, just some like an appropriate loading, I guess, and frequency for anyone who is looking to a strength-based program to do in alignment with their fat loss plan. Sure. Well, um, even though I said that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're favoring muscle building and strength building exercises over cardio, there's still some other movement in there. Um, it's still important to move around. So what we've set up is two strength training sessions per week as a minimum. And um, as high as four times. Um, most people probably do great with two or three times per week. And then they would alternate those days with a what we're calling a movement session. 
so it's very low intensity aerobic movement um it's some some body weight movement um uh, some sort of active mobility recovery style movements and things like that and i find that's a good way to just break up your day um, throw in some some formal exercise but nothing that's so extreme that um, again it's going to put you into this um, fatigue state or this um, uh, state that's going to drive hunger um, beyond what you know what you can control and then um, the, the, the buzzword right now is rucking which yeah. is just a fancy way of saying go for a walk yes. uh, but typically off-road if you can and um, maybe with a, a small pack on just for a little bit of extra weight um, and it's just it's it's so simple yet so effective as a way to uh, turn a couple of hours uh, to your advantage on a on a weekend perhaps yeah and so we've, we're recommending a day of that as well. Um, and the sessions, as far as strength goes, um, very low volume. And so it's really just three main strength exercises. And usually it's like a squat and then a pushing exercise and a pulling exercise. Yeah. And then on the other day, it would be some sort of hinging movement, um, otherwise known as, as a deadlift or picking something up off the ground. Um, and again, combined with a pulling movement and a pushing movement through the upper body. Um, reps are pretty moderate. Again, we're not looking to um, lift heavy loads. We're not looking to make it um, this extreme kind of muscle burning um, um, piece. It's just right in the middle, that sweet spot once again. Yeah. Um, and something important is about the effort level. It's moving to fatigue, not to failure. And that's quite a key one. Actually, depend, for most people, no matter what sort of phase they're on, this is something I talk about a lot is we're not, we don't really need to go all the way to this sort of eyeball bleeding, screaming failure point with our strength sets. As long as we get close, and it's usually the rule of thumb is between one and four reps from failure. Yeah. Okay. And it can take a bit of practice to dial that in, but um, that's the sweet spot. And that also means you recover faster, which again is pretty crucial when you're on this low calorie um, uh, diet because um, yeah, if you start impacting your recovery a, a few days in the track and maybe a few weeks in the track, things start to go south and you find those hunger signals again creeping up, um, aches, pains, niggles, um, lethargy, and we don't really want that. So we're trying to feel better after our sessions, not worse. Again, it's a different scenario to what we might be doing in other phases of our lives or our training. And then we finish off with a little circuit, sort of the smaller muscles, core, um, arms, things like that, the smaller muscles that you can sort of push a little bit harder and get a little bit more metabolic, um, less rest, higher reps. But again, they're, they're not overly fatiguing. Um, they're easy to recover from because the systemic um, impact from those smaller muscles is actually quite small. So the easy way to think about that is if you do um, a big set of squats, you're absolutely knackered, but you do a big set of bicep curls. And while those biceps might hurt at the time, you bounce back you know, within a few seconds because it's not creating much of a systemic fatigue on your heart and lungs. Yeah, okay, but you're still getting guns, so there's that. You're still getting guns, which is that's really what it's all about, Mickey. <laughs> it is, it that's really is. That's why I wear a um, shirt, two sizes too small, you know. It's an easy hat. I don't actually have to train. I just wear small T-shirts. <gasps> Perfect. So, Darren, um, the circuit and the, the push, the pull, the squat, that's all within one session. How long is a session like that? How long would you expect it to take someone? My goal is for people to be in and out in like 30, 40 minutes. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah, again, no need to no need to be doing a massive session. Um, and again, in fact, you want to avoid that because even if you are being mindful of how hard you push, at a certain point, the volume is going to catch up with you. you know? So if you are exercising, even with a sort of work rest scenario, after an hour or so, you're going to start to feel it. And um, without repeating myself too much, this is the thing. It's like it's not that one session that gets you. It's multiple. Yeah. And you think, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. You're often very motivated. You're in this program. You've got group support. You've got Mickey's support on there for you as well. And you're like, this is the year. And you're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. And then week three hits. And you wake up and you don't know what the heck just happened to you. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't anything sudden. It was what you did those, for those three weeks accumulating. Um, and it's never really – it's never often the thing you did the day before. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, a um, it's the sum of all things adding up. So – um, while you might feel fine in the in the moment, it's down the track that sometimes catches up. So yeah, keeping on top of your recovery is crucial in a in a phase like this. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense, and it's often the same with diet as well. Is that you know within Mondays matter. Not only do you have the PCMF days, but we have a diet break every sort of uh, fortnight. 
whereby the calories are lifted to slightly, which might be almost near maintenance for an individual. Of course, we don't measure that because there's a metabolic reset meal. And I just say yeah. incorporate yeah. more food. Yeah. But there are people often think, well, if I just skip that diet break weekend and continue in my calorie deficit, I'll have make better progress overall and whilst initially that might be true same thing I notice happens is that just along the line because they haven't had that physical or psychological break from a um, fat loss plan then they had a sort of a bit of a roadblock really so so I appreciate what you're saying there. Darren with regards to volume uh, or reps, um, one of my final questions really is um, you may set out a certain number of reps and, and you've sort of given an idea of how many sort of reps in reserve, if you like, that, that or what fatigue might feel like. So if I, for example, I was at the gym this morning and I could do clean and jerks from sitting uh, because I can't use my leg, um, but I could, on, I could only do... I could do eight and then I could do only could do six and could only do five and the next in my final set. So I tried to focus instead on, oh my goodness, you only did five reps. And I got to that same level mm. of fatigue that I did in my first set. Does that, is that going to also be fine? Yeah, absolutely. The, the issue I guess would be um, if that five is more like a two, you know, and it's at a certain point, the reps start to drop too low to create much stimulus at all. Yes. Um, so let's, let's re, um, re say that example with slightly more extreme drop off in the sense of uh, you did 15 on the first set and then you did nine on the second set and then you did three on the last set. You know, it's likely that that was um, you'd either you're driven to fatigue too hard. You hadn't rested enough. Um, or the weight was too heavy because you dropped off so so dramatically, or maybe that the you weren't you know you were, weren't conditioned enough. As, uh, you were too new to the exercise, and so your 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 lack of technique was letting you down. But typically, we want to see the repetition staying reasonably close to each other um, to show that you have recovered enough to work hard in the first place. And that's why I'm often a big fan of supersetting, um, which means alternating one exercise with another. And ideally, the other exercise uses completely different muscles to the first exercise so that, um, A, it doesn't affect that exercise um, moving from one to the other, and B, you actually rest less overall. So science suggests that the sweet spot, um, like the practical sweet spot, is about three minutes rest between sets. Yeah, okay. Um, but that's like, especially in today's sort of Instagram world, you are standing around going, oh my God, time is standing still. I'm watching paint right here. Three minutes. What am I going to do with myself? Totally. Uh, but if you rest one minute and then you do another exercise and then you rest one minute and you go back to that first exercise, you've got your three minutes rest, um, but you've, you haven't stood around for as long. And, it's, and even the perception of how long you're standing around for is, is dramatically decreased. So that really helps. So you're getting, you're getting optimal rest, but you're also not, not wasting too much time. No, that's great. And I think – as you say that, then for me, I think probably I should have dropped my weight down to try and keep a bit more consistent because whilst eight and five don't seem that much, actually it is quite a bit if you look at it from a percentage perspective. Uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. Possibly that weight was a bit heavy for the first one. Yeah. I agree, actually, now. Yeah, yeah. Also just awkward. See yeah. clean and jerks. <laughs> I take my hat off to you, Mickey. That's impressive. <gasps> oh, hi, um, Trying everything, trying everything I can. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I see you found a crank. I did. I did find a crank and uh, at Dunedin Anytime Fitness uh, Gym. So um, that's actually really hard work. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Much harder yeah. than the standing yeah. work. <laughs> well, I'll see you on the next uh, Team New Zealand team. Exactly. Yeah, that's what that's uh, that could be my pivot goal with this uh, injury. Um, Darren, where can people catch up with you? Uh, I am spending a lot of time on Instagram, um, and that is Darren Alice, E W L, -L I S, 75, the glorious year of my birth. Otherwise, drop me a line through my website, which is darrenalice.coach. Brilliant. And of course, uh, those people who sign up to Mondays Matter. So this goes out. I have a webinar tomorrow night 
all about fat loss back to basics, an opportunity for someone to recalibrate their knowledge or refresh or just get over the sort of the, the dust has settled on our sort of holiday season. Now we're back to um, the real grind of real life. So some tips to make it easy for you to understand the fat loss process. Of course, I talk a little bit about strength training in that, but uh, Monday's Matter also opens this week as well after that webinar where you get the expertise of Darren in addition to my nutrition expertise for a really complete program. Darren, thanks for your time today. Really appreciate it.